Hello and welcome to the Liz Soko podcast. Today we have Anita Milovach, who is a sexual wellness expert teacher, a tantric um, healer, and many other things. And I had a beautiful discussion with her before recording this. So we're kind of just going with the flow today and talking about all things sacred sexuality. She's right now located in Dubai, correct? And she's got a very interesting story. So Anita, I would love for you to begin with your wellness journey and how you found sexuality and your perspectives on the divine feminine and divine masculine energies. Can you please give a little intro to the listeners? Yes. First of all, thank you so much for having me in your podcast and hello everyone who is tuning in. So I have started my journey on tantric healing and womb therapy about four years ago. So I was like majority of people in the corporate world for the longest time. I've traveled the world. I was quite successful as a project manager, but it never really fulfilled me. And so when I started entering the world of coaching and spirituality, it was mind blowing for me. And I wasn't at first into sexuality. Like I was always into the topic itself, but I wasn't healing or coaching about it or teaching about it. And with time, I must admit, it came through activation. So I was receiving downloads and inspirations. And then I went on the tantric journey and I did my education there. And the real activation happened actually during a very rough period of my life where I was going personally for a very hard time. I mean, really like very difficult time. I broke up with my ex, my mom got sick. It was just a disaster. And I know people often say that they have been activated for challenging time. However, not everyone needs to go through that. But this was my story. So I was really diving deeper and deeper into these topics. And the more I spiritually awakened and the more I knew who I was, what I came here to do and who I am on a soul level, not on a level of identity, the stronger my sexuality and what it represents and stands for came up and showed itself. So this is where I am, why I am today, because it's part of my soul mission to help the collective shift into this new level of consciousness through embodying their sexuality, masculine energy, feminine energy principles and sovereign power. Wow, that's so inspirational. Um... And where was the first time that you realized that sexuality is so much deeper than biology? When I was in Bali in 2015, now if, if your listeners have been to Bali or you perhaps yourself, you might understand, but whoever hasn't been to Bali, the energy of this place runs on a lot of feminine energy. Right, So every country, every city has its meridian points, just like we have in our bodies, that represent a certain energy. So in Bali, it's very sensual, very soft, very feminine, not just because it's an island and it's beautiful and relaxing, but because it's so strong. And that was the first time when I was working there, actually, and I was giving a workshop, and I noticed that when people were there, they had so much sexual energy within them, like you could feel it, but they didn't know what to do with it. So for them, sexual energy was just, okay, physical act, intimacy, reproduction. I need to look sexy. I need to wear certain things to be, you know, conceived as sexy from others, whereas it had nothing to do with real sexual power. And it just dawned on me. So it's very hard sometimes to explain those things because it's not something you can just tell, like you tell your day, you went to the baker and you bought bread and stuff. It's something that happens on the very subconscious level and it just does click and you know. And I think that this, you know, comes from a lot of subconscious noticing before already, but until it reaches the consciousness and you become really aware of it, there is a process. So this is when I noticed how, no, there is a lot of work to be done in this topic and we need to let everyone know what it truly stands for and how important it is in our lives. Mm, That's amazing. Yeah. And something I've been noticing recently is like with the energies, like whatever the astrology is that we are going deep into the subconscious layers of the mind as a collective. And some of us are even going into the unconscious, the archetypal realm the realm of the void or the great light or source energy. And um, I used to really hesitate about talking about this, but I think it's 
because we are becoming more conscious, people are more comfortable with having these conversations, which is a real reflection of the growth that we're doing. And that really excites me, but we do need to be supported. And those of us who had the experiences with spirit that guided us to become teachers and healers are obviously going to lead the conversation. So I decided to take it upon myself <laughs> and invite <laughs> Anita and to talk about sacred sexuality because, you know, I'm just tired of the masculine energy polluting the sexual space. And it mm -hmm. happens over and over, even if it's a woman. And it's just all about the male gaze and how the woman looks to the man and looking appealing. And mm -hmm. I have always been very strong and emotionally sensitive to the point where I would believe my emotions more than anything that was happening. And that made my spiritual journey very clear and very easy because I never doubted my own, own emotions. So if something didn't resonate, I would immediately just reject it. And I just kept moving like reject, 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 reject. And then I got to the point of sexuality where there was a bit of confusion. And that's because sexual conditioning is ancient. And this idea of the woman being submissive to the man and the woman being um, too seductive and the woman being the cause for sin. And that was something that was in my own subconscious. And whether it came from religion or my ancestral lineage, I'm Russian. So obviously that's very prominent there. <laughs> and, you know, I just started to say like, this is also just not true. And I started rejecting that aspect too. So can we just go into a little bit more about sexual conditioning for both sides, for men and for women? Because men are also experiencing the same thing, a lack of intimacy, having too many partners with very little connection. Um, moving on when things get tough rather than sticking through discomfort. These are all issues with modern society, hookup culture, and the hypersexualization of the feminine body and the masculine body. Mm -hmm. Yeah, these are so important topics, and I'm really glad that we are speaking about them because it goes way, way back into time, way back into time. Yeah, so just if you look at for example, the biblical explanation of Adam and Eve, I mean, it is all so distorted, even the tree of life that is represented there and the serpent that is actually deceiving Eve, if you want to look back at, at the history that we know is the history, but actually no one knows if it's really true, esoteric knowledge teaches something else, and that's where I would definitely look at first. The serpent in the Adam and Eve story was evil right, was shown as deceiving Eve. And as a matter of fact, the serpent is actually representative of Kundalini energy, which is sexual energy. And a serpent is not just that, it also stands for protection, for knowledge, for power, and the tree of life is the ever existing tree in our human history, but also in our soul evolution. And very often it is not mentioned that it's not Eve who was Adam's first wife, but it's actually um, Lilith who was his first wife, right? So now Lilith at that time, if we go back to esoteric knowledge, didn't want to submit to Adam just wanting to do it in a certain position. She wanted to be on top. She wanted to explore. She wanted to do stuff. Now Adam wasn't comfortable with that. And they were both created equally. So eventually to cut that short, she was sent off to, out of paradise and then Eve was created out of Adam's rib and was submissive and was basically the divine feminine principle of I am the woman, I'm listening to the man and um, I am doing as he says so that he can feel strong if you want to look at it that way and this is the principle that still goes until today. Female sexuality is highly suppressed and astrology black moon Lilith represents that part in a man and in a woman and it has been suppressed because it's powerful. It is very powerful. So this is just one part of, of the story of sexuality, but it goes so much further than that. And women have actually lived. There was a time on earth long, long ago where women were worshipped, where the feminine was worshipped, the goddess archetype. In the old Sanskrit, when we were worshipping goddesses, we didn't worship them as separate deities, but as part of ourselves. So whatever we worshipped in them, we worshipped in ourselves. Now every culture has their history, has their story. 
whether it's Greek mythology or the Indian culture or our Christian culture, we all have different archetypes within that, or Carl Jung, who has well spoken of the archetypes of the masculine and the feminine. But female sexuality has been deeply suppressed ever since the Inquisitions have begun, where any sort of female power was deemed as evil and demonic. And whatever happened at that time is still encoded in our DNA. It is still deeply embraced within us. And it just, just moved further and further down the history and certain industries have just made it worse. So we are a society nowadays that's over-sexualized, yet sexually still highly suppressed. So wow. where did we go wrong? Where's the gap? I mean, I think, I think what we're looking at here is that there is an inherent fear in men who have traditionally held power of women of female sexuality because female sexuality and female energy represent mystery the unknown yeah and mm. this connection to essentially to god to source energy is freaking scary and that's why witches were so powerful and that's why they were killed <laughs> and you know like um when I was doing my healing and going into this archetypal realm, I started having a real connection to, you know, witches. And my grandmother's grandmother was a gypsy. And that's a very similar, you know, type of thing. And I feel, I feel that culture inside of me and it's coming out more and more when I read tarot cards or when I do energy healing and it's all been the same throughout history for all women of all traditions. And even in shamanic traditions in Mesoamerica, which I'm studying right now, um, women don't have the ability to enter the non-ordinary reality. So shamans and in, even in Siberia, they have to be men. And I'm yeah. like, you know what? It would be way easier for a woman to do it because I know that for sure because we're naturally connected to that realm. And it's just, you know, it's, it's kind of like absurd that, and you know, a lot of it, I think another thing, another unconscious thing that this is actually unconscious, scarcity. Um, scarcity is linked to men creating... Well, I'm not going to say men. It's all, it's all culture. Cause we we're, we're as women, we're technically enablers too. And I take responsibility for that. You know, like now I'm not an enabler, but I probably was an enabler in the, in the past. <laughs> um, so men wanting to create power games by creating false value created scarcity. And this scarcity is actually false because abundance happens in the spiritual realm abundance happens in the way that we connect to infinity and god abundance is not about how much gold you have which is the male interpretation of abundance and as humans all of us are naturally wired to chase abundance where we went wrong is understanding what abundance is and you know the bible tried to explain it to us and all of these spiritual texts tried to explain it to us but there's still always the ego. More, 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 more. And we see that in American overconsumption. Um, and that overconsumption has, you know, transferred into sexuality. And that's, that's what we're looking at right now. So this hyper sexuality that we're looking at is actually the result of scarcity. That's, that's how it connects in my mind. You are absolutely right, because everything that we overdo that's hyper is trying to compensate something, right? So when we have a balance within something, there is a need to be over it or under it. You're just balanced. You're at peace. It's an equilibrium. It's an equal level. So when we do something too much, then the question we need to ask ourselves, if we are hypersexual, what are we trying to compensate to be hypersexual? What does hypersexual even represent? Right, very often, especially in the spiritual community, we throw around all those fancy schmancy words, but majority of people don't really even know what they represent or they don't ask themselves the right question. When we look at sexuality, it's always men and women. Now, sexuality is about two major points or talking about sovereign power, spirituality is about two major points. It's about owning 
your sexuality, understanding first of what it means for you, because no two people are the same. Everyone is born with a different level of sexual energy, right? That's why certain people are hypersexual in terms of they need it more and more, more than the average. But we speak of hyper means more than the average. Or some just need it once a month and they're happy, but because really it, they don't need more. So we can't put a status quo and say, okay, if you don't fulfill this norm, you are not sexual or you're hypersexual, right? Everyone is different. But it's all about balancing out your energy. So in Sanskrit, sexuality and sexual energy, therefore, it's associated with the Shiva and Shakti consciousness. So Shakti is the divine feminine energy in a woman and in a man, by the way, right? We're talking energy here, not gender, which represents the energy of creation, of intuition, of birthing, of movement, of flow, feminine energy. That is Shakti. Now, she is meant to merge with Shiva, which is pure consciousness, awareness. Those two together is what actually life, what sexual energy, and what sovereign power is about. Now, men and women have both masculine and feminine energies. And for both of us, it has been out of balance. And while women were suppressed for centuries, do not get it twisted. It's men have had the same effect. Because whatever was done to women, actually, masculinity was attacked first. Because the masculine energy stands for protection, providing. They're the hunters. They're here to protect and to cherish the feminine in its basic energetical terms. They're not talking about submission. That's the natural archetype. A healthy masculine would have not allowed what happened to women back at that time. So it's actually not the women that were attacked first, it's the man, the masculine energy. And that's often not spoken about. And then obviously with time, women have taken a revenge. We had certain movements like the feminism movement that has obviously given us a lot of beautiful gifts, but then caused whole other problems. So we are where we are today because of a lot of different reasons. Yes, and I love what you're saying about how these energies exist in both of us, in both men and women. And I had a conversation about with my partner about this the other day because I was like, you know, I'm confused about what toxic masculinity is, what an embodied woman is. And essentially we came to the realization that I am more likely to cast blame at men. And his response was, well, show me an embodied woman. And I just sat there thinking, I'm like, hmm, Oprah Winfrey? Like, I didn't know. Like, what is an embodied woman? What is it? What does it entail? What am I trying to do in this lifetime? And mm. I was like, well, what do you think it is? And he said, a gentle mother. Interesting. Um, and I, that, that resonated with me because I really felt that, you know, because sexual energy, yes, we see it as sexual, but sexual energy is life force. Yes. It's, it's pure life force. Yes, you can channel it sexually. You can channel it into the um, sacral chakra and turn it into creativity. You can channel it into identity and turn it into power. You can channel it into the heart and turn it into unconditional love. And I was like, ding dong. Like my grandmother has channeled all her sexual energy into unconditional love, which explains her close relationship to God. And then I realized where I'm trying to go. And our idea of the empowered woman is completely jaded because of the feminist movement, because we attacked men for our lack of confidence, our lack of inability to succeed in the patriarchal world. But actually, it is the suppression of the feminine in both genders. And then I realized that the empowered woman is just someone who sees all of this, the observer. So if you can see, like you and I, that obviously men are not to blame here. It's a few powerful men who just so had the influence on the rest of hierarchy. These few powerful men are not being blamed, but the whole male gender is being blamed. And I have a lot of compassion for men because I love my brother dearly. I love my partner dearly. And they have nothing but soft, sweet hearts. And they're constantly saying, how can I be better? How can I work on this? And I don't see a lot of women doing that. <laughs> like, I see women like, no, they're wrong. Like, they did this wrong, you know? And, and I don't want to be like that. I want to be fair 
I want to be just and um, Anita. So can you tell us how we can really strike that balance with him? Yeah, so first off, if you work on having a balance between your feminine and masculine energies, as a woman, you need to look at your own masculine perception. What Carl Jung referred to as the inner animus in a woman is the masculine energy, right? So the masculine energy in a woman. How do you perceive masculinity, ergo masculine energy? Are you having judgmental thoughts and beliefs around them? Like all men are the same. They just want to get in your panties and then they leave. Or all men are just selfish or da 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 Like all these belief systems we are running around men. What is your perception? And it always actually goes back to the relationship you had with your father. How was the relationship? What did he show you what it means to be a man or to have a man in your life? How does it reflect in any of your relationships with the other gender, in your romantic relationships, in your career, in your family, in your friend circles? That's the first starting point. Because when you see where you are at with your masculine, you can very easily say where you are with your feminine. Because if that is not balanced, you can't work on your feminine. So the way to your feminine energy as a woman to balance it out is through the masculine. Mm, I've been How saying this forever. forever. This is the real work. You cannot sit there and just chant and look pretty and put salt baths and dance. And yes, I'm feminine. You might feel like it for a moment, but you're not going to the root. You need to go to the root. So it, it is through your masculine. And for the man, it's through their feminine. So it's everything that I've just said for the woman, the other way around, the anima, the feminine energy in a man. He needs to look at that and at the relationship with his mother. How easy is it for him to be vulnerable? Does he trust his vulnerability? Can he openly speak his heart? Can he lead? Can he really live a life of purpose? That is the masculine. A masculine, when he's balanced, he leads from his heart. And there is nothing more beautiful than a powerful heart of a man that's open and ready to give. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. That is that that's the work. And for the woman, this is really crucial because no matter what you do with your feminine, if your perception of the masculine is rubbish, you will never find the inner balance. And you cannot work on your Shiva Shakti consciousness. It's impossible because it will always be in balance. And that's where we are at, is the perception we have towards men. We don't understand that it's actually a natural game of polarities. And as you beautifully explained, an empowered woman is the observer. She is is above all the judgment, above all the labeling, not in the term that she's better than, which most people will think we are saying, no, meaning she's above, she can see what's going on and that it's not right. The more we label things like narcissist, empath, toxic masculinity, toxic masculinity, these are all labels we use to understand something, but also to justify why we keep doing what we're doing. And really being in your power means removing yourself from these labels completely and seeing where the real game is at and what really needs to be done. And then we can start looking at each other as the divine beings that we are. It's a game changer. Wow. I mean, I've been saying this all along and people kind of laughed at me where I, I believe that the way to strike balance is to always find opposition. Um, so if you're naturally, if you're, it's the same, I'll compare it to a more like real life scenario because we are in the subconscious depths now. Um, so let's say you like science, the way that you're going to evolve is by reading art books, by going to the art museum. If you like art, the way to succeed, study finance, study psychology. And that is how we evolve. We don't evolve by doing the one thing that comes naturally to us. That's how we limit ourselves. And um, we cannot strike that balance if we don't already observe what we are right now. So the first step is always observe your current identity. Observe your current actions, behaviors, thoughts, limiting beliefs, perceptions, etc. After that, you can observe other identities, other perspectives. So let's say I'm a woman. I'll see how men think, how men act, how men are more confident, but how they also struggle to express their emotions. And then I will, I will reflect and say, what part of this is within me? And then I will strike the balance between my natural and what the opposition is. That's, that's what I found to be true. <laughs> yes, and you do that without attachment 
and judgment. So you observe without identifying yourself with that which you observe and without attaching yourself with that which you observe. Mm -hmm. So when you talk about identity, who is observing your identity, oh, right? Well, so th that's the whole thing. The, actually, the actual observer is our consciousness, is our soul. When we speak of the observer, it's not the mind. The mind is masculine energy, is thought. Thought always comes first. What, bring, what births it into manifestation, into physical form, is energy of the feminine, which is the energy of creation and creativity. So thought comes first, and then, which is air element, fire element, births through the water canal, water, feminine, earth, physical form, feminine. This is the cycle on how it works with the energy. So we need both, mm -hmm. right? We need both. And this is where we need to understand that you, it's not about which one you need more. It's about balancing them out, the masculine thought with the feminine creation manifestation. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. We can't have, think about the reproductive cycle. You can't have a child without both feminine and masculine. And um, something I'm noticing is that our next step in evolution as humans is self-sufficiency, right? Self-sufficiency as a whole. Not to say that we don't need partners, because I do believe in a more conservative sense that we are um, a species that seeks partnership. So with that in mind, I also think, and I was having this conversation with my mom the other day. She's like, no, but I need a man. I need a man. I need someone there. I'll feel lonely. And I was like, you want a man. You don't need a man. That's the difference. And that, that's the difference of rewiring your mind, realizing that, yes, you have this desire for something, but can you live with this desire, without this desire? Absolutely. And that, that gives you a lot of confidence as an individual and psychological empowerment. And um, I think that I fell into the hookup culture, the feminist agenda, you know, and it only hurt me. It only led to me feeling empty, led to suffering, led to questioning my self-worth and my um, being insecure about the way I appeared. And I realized that this culture only leads to one point, And that is thinking that what that you are unworthy. It only leads to unworthiness. So how do we empower the youth, this young generation that was born with these ideas? Mm. So first off, we need to understand that hookup culture is detrimental because there is no such thing as casual sex. We are working here with energy, right? So whoever you are sleeping with as a woman, you are receiving in your womb, which is the main work of feminine energy is the womb space, you're receiving not just the genital of the man, but also his entire energy. And with that, his downloads, whether he's depressed, whether he's sad, whether he's happy, what he has eaten, you're receiving all these data downloads energetically into your womb. And you're carrying it. And then also the ones that he slept with. And then you sleep with the next one and you're just repeating the cycle. So it's like a huge energetic spiritual gangbang happening in your womb, even long after you're done with with him and the others right and it's the same for men men obviously biologically men are pulled to spread their seeds to as many fertile women as they can however when they are intimate with too many women and it's meaningless in terms of it's just just sexual which doesn't exist right they also spread their energy thin and they take in the energy of the woman as well how many of you that are listening or maybe even yourself have experienced real depression after being intimate with someone? You suddenly felt really bad and you didn't know why. That's because you pick up this energy and sometimes this energy stays as an energetic deep breath in the womb. So when you understand what sexual energy stands for, what it represents, how it plays out in our body, you will be very conscious who you sleep with, very. Mm -hmm. You won't anymore spread yourself around because you will see it as the sacred act that it is. Mm -hmm. And for women, there is another issue with hookup culture more than for men is that we release oxytocin after we've been intimate, after the orgasm, which is the bonding hormone, the hormone that wants love, that wants you to be in love with that person that helps you release it. So we are bonding with this person and then this person is gone, which leaves us very empty afterwards. Mm. 
So while men can do that biologically more, they do release oxytocin as well, but the testosterone kicks in and is much stronger. For us, it has a lot of negative side effects. And women used to do that because they think they can be like men. It's cool, right? It's cool to have had a lot of experience. And while building your sexual repertoire comes with experience as well, you need to be mindful about it. So step number one, especially for your audience, would really be to educate yourself on sexual energy, on the sacredness and the importance of it and how it affects you to create awareness around that topic. And then as a woman, starting to honor your body. No one is saying don't sleep around if that's something you really desire and it makes you feel good, go for it. And I think it's something that everyone has to decide for themselves. Mm -hmm. But can you as a woman honor your body, honor your yoni, which is a Sanskrit word for vagina, right? Can you honor your yoni? Do you understand that she is a portal, that she holds all the wisdom, that she acts like a vacuum? Can you honor your womb, which holds the seeds of your entire ancestral lineage of your past and of the future lineage to come? And do you then understand the sacredness of being a woman? And once you do all of that, can you still entertain hookup culture? Yeah, I mean, the sad thing is that we were literally brainwashed to participate and to be so materialistic about sexuality and i blame the porn industry um <laughs> i blame you know all the rap videos and music industry um and the lack of sexual education uh, in young years you know if i was told these things and taught about my sexual energy and power of womanhood and power of and just the beauty of being a woman i don't think i would have lived those four years the way i lived those four years I don't think I would have even drank that much alcohol because there's such a lack of education and it's, it's so normal to party, to have these sexual relationships, to disrespect your body and to even, even like, I'll go even too far as to say that we've normalized depression, that it's okay. You know, we've normalized that and it's not okay. Depression is a sign that your body's out of balance your mind is out of balance, you know? And, oh, it's okay, just, you know, take this medicine. All of us are like that. And you know what I have to say? If you're feeling depressed, you have to create a plan. You have to experiment. You have to um, reconsider your lifestyle. You have to reconsider your conditioning. You need to make steps to get out of these states because these states are portals to awareness. And I was doing Reiki on Monday because I'm now becoming a Reiki healer. I had my first attunement on Tuesday. And so I went to a Reiki healer on Monday and I had a download in my head. Anxiety and depression are portals to awareness. So when we feel these low vibrational states, we're being called because we have ignored the call so many times. We're being called to finally learn something. Our soul is guiding us to learn something in our conscious mind. And the more and more you ignore it, the more these states of awareness will begin to attract into your life. And that yes. is something that people aren't realizing, that these things can be changed and anxiety can be healed. And anxiety is linked to root trauma. Anxiety is always linked to childhood trauma, um, unless it's a vibrational thing, because I know energy sensitives get anxiety just by being in certain environments like I do um but yeah I, I think that mental health education goes hand in hand with sexual sexuality education it all is always linked and connected yeah it's always linked and as you said depression and anxiety are results they're not your natural state now you need to ask yourself what is it a result of and usually they're always going back to a disconnection to yourself there is a disconnect with your soul essence. That's why you are in this state. And what the medical industry does, and when it subscribes you, when it gives you pills, prescribes you pills and all this stuff, it treats the symptoms. It doesn't treat the root cause. Now, for everything that manifests physically, there was before that a manifestation in the astral body. And then it actually manifests in your physical body. Now, of course, there's a difference if you have genetic diseases, right? So I'm not a doctor. I cannot enter these kinds of spheres. However, energetically, 
there is a huge component to it. Mm -hmm. So it is not normal to be depressed. It is not. So it is funny how depression is normalized, but sexual energy, which is actually our natural state, is dogmatized. Yeah. So there is a lot of programming going on, and you need to understand who wants us to believe what and why. If you want to know where a lot of power is, go to that which has been highly suppressed and a lot of force is taken to hide it. And then you know where the real power is. Yeah, so let's, let's look at that right now. Let's see, where is there a lot of suppression in society? Authentic mm -hmm. natural sexuality that is not um, overdone, that is not perverted um, or distorted. Um, holistic healing that takes mental states and energetic states into account as well as physical health. Um, this seems like it would kill a lot of industries. I hate to say it, but it would. <laughs> and another thing that is suppressed is obviously the actual authentic feminine energy. And another thing that is suppressed is your inherent state of abundance and consciousness. Um, something, some, a download that I had the other day was that you know, in our natural state, we are conscious, we are consciousness. Um, and all of these distortions, these limiting beliefs that come from society and from our DNA, our ancestral trauma, and from our gender conditioning, all of these things are just distorting our natural state of awareness. Um, and the work that I think I'm going to do in the future is just to get people back to their natural state of awareness. You know, like you don't need any of that. And if it comes up, you can just reject it out of your mind. Um, that is something that is being suppressed. <laughs> that is really what's being suppressed. The real suppression happens and it comes in as mind control. It really does. I'm not trying to be a conspiracist, even though I was when I was like 14. Um, <laughs> the real suppression happens at the level of the unconscious mind and it comes in through programming, through media, through culture. Hookup culture is a form of programming. I hate to say it, but it's lowering your consciousness. You know, why is it normal to consume drugs and alcohol where it's not normal to eat healthy, exercise, and meditate? Like, what is that? You know, and it's obviously an economic thing, but that is a suppression of consciousness. Everything that is socially normalized at this time is suppressing your, suppressing your consciousness. And there are French people like Anita and I who are like, no, you know that your soul is telling you something. Start listening, start listening. Like there's something coming up and it's true. And I think that I don't, I don't, I, I mean, I get emotional talking about this. Like, I don't think we can do it anymore. I really don't think there's a lot of us who are just not willing to put up with the suppression of consciousness anymore because it only leads to suffering. Your soul everybody's soul on this planet at this time is drawn to consciousness to that feeling of unity with all that is with plants with animals with people with sexuality with god and that feeling is beyond the mind that feeling is beyond identity and that feeling is also what we experience during orgasm <laughs> right anita <laughs> yes pretty much <laughs> it's absolute bliss Mm -hmm. Our natural state is absolute bliss. And what's the easiest way to control nations? It is fear, right? It's making something a status quo, but just because something is a status quo, it doesn't mean it's right. And who is society? It's each and every one of us. So it's for each and every one of us to start waking up. And the work is not finding something. The work is deconditioning. So you need to imagine yourself as this beautiful ball of light right? You're this beautiful shining ball of light. Now on this ball of light, there's so much dust in form of programming, conditioning, right? Belief systems, dogma, yada, yada, yada. So the ball cannot shine. It's full with, it's full with dust. So the work is to dust it off, to remove the layers and layers of what we are not, who we are not, what we believe we should be, what we can be, blah, blah, blah. So our ball can finally freaking shine. That is the work. And as you said, we cannot do it anymore. And that's why, because we have entered a new era, which is the age of the feminine, mm -hmm. the age of Aquarius, where it's all about being 
not equal in terms of gender, but being equal in terms of we don't need these big role models anymore. The superstars of the past are no longer going to be the role models and superstars of the future. It's going to be people who have embodied their sovereign power. And this new age of the feminine is going to ask of all of us to be in our sovereign power, which is our spiritual power, authentic expression, fully owning and embodying our healthy sexuality for what it means for us, and uniting our masculine and feminine balance so we can create the life we really desire, manifest, and also have these relationships we want, first off with ourselves and then with all the other people in our lives. This is going to be the work of the new age we are in. And of course, not going to happen overnight because we've been through centuries of a lot of bad stuff. However, if we just keep focusing on that, we will never move forward. So we need to understand what that is new times now calling us to do and then step into it one step at a time. And everyone when they are ready, right? So divine timing isn't, isn't the clock time, it's energy. And everyone, not everyone, is going to get there. Some won't, and that's okay. Your soul came here to experience something, and maybe for some people it's not that, and that's fine. Who are we to judge? But we are here to help um, others see who they truly are, and we do that best by shining our light. Mm -hmm. So they can shine theirs too. That was beautifully said. Um, definitely a channeled message. <laughs> <Felt Yeah. bad. laughs> Let's go. Um, yeah. yeah, I think I think people who work with sexuality, it's not about sexuality. It's about consciousness. Um, it's about you, how comfortable you are with the, with your emotions, how comfortable you are with your body, how comfortable you are with even talking about sexuality. And I know a lot of women don't even want to talk about it, feel, feel like it's like making jokes or like, it's like they're like shy five-year-old girls. And that's, that's a real result of conditioning. That's almost like someone saying that, you know, and I think the, con the conditioning of sexuality goes hand in hand with the religious conditioning also. The religious trauma goes hand in yeah. hand with sexual conditioning. And getting past that is basically so my medicine with connecting to my sexuality was my was connecting to source and realizing that the god that was depicted by religion is a false god <laughs> and realizing that if i don't fear god i don't fear sexuality so I don't know if that helps anyone, but if you can directly connect to source consciousness, which is what I help people do, um, <laughs> if you can directly connect, connect to source consciousness and go through your highest self and see how beautiful, how innocent, how pure, how worthy, how amazing you are, then everything else that you've learned and it culminates in religion because most people's biggest fear is fear of God. If you can get past that point of fearing the fake God, you're in contact with full on consciousness. And then once you bring that awareness of the consciousness down to sexuality, your whole experience changes. Your whole experience shifts. What can you add there, Anita? Does that resonate? That it absolutely resonates. And when we look at religion or those institutions, what they depicted God to be is to be this usually man sitting up there and looking at us and judging us, right? I mean, the way that that society works is a lot of mixed messages right so god loves you but you'll burn in hell sex is the most sacred thing on earth and it's the most dirty sorry sex is the most dirty thing on this earth and you should only do it with the person you love like if you just focus on what is being taught a lot of it doesn't make any sense it's so contradictive I would invite everyone to dig deeper into esoteric knowledge. Esoteric knowledge shows that at the beginning of time, father, mother, God, consciousness, first of all, if, if God was any gender, it would be female because female energy stands for creation, just FYI, but we are not going there, right? So in the beginning of time, God, goddess consciousness created their 12 emanations. So those emanations were called the 12 eons. Eons were the keepers of time, and they were a masculine and feminine energy. That's why maybe you have heard the term, oh, it happened eons ago, it was eons ago, right? So it all goes back to the esoteric knowledge. 
So we are all an extension of divinity and divinity is our masculine and feminine energy. So whenever we suppress one of them, we suppress that part of divinity within ourselves. That is what God consciousness, goddess consciousness has to be because it's not just us humans that are based on feminine masculine principles. It's everywhere in existence, in the plant and in the animal kingdom. And you can see it everywhere. If you just go into nature, you will always see examples of feminine and masculine principles. And this is what everything is based upon, the yin and the yang, the dark and the light. We need the dark and the light. We cannot have one without the other. Mm -hmm. That's the union and that's sexual energy. And the thing is, it's a paradox, right? We don't even need to focus on sexual energy because it's already there. It comes up naturally. Kundalini work, tantric work, it's all about having the Kundalini, right? The sexual energy piercing through your chakras, through your nadis, the channels. And when it does that, it opens your chakras. So it reveals everything that is stuck that needs to be released. So it's not always a very pleasant experience. Mm -hmm. So you don't need to sit there and open and close your chakras. You do the Kundalini, it does it all for you. Mm -hmm. And then this Kundalini that comes from the bottom of your spine, from the root, is supposed to merge on the crown with the shiva with the god consciousness this is how this is actually working mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. does it make sense yes i mean i study i study spirituality I, I study eastern spirituality so the kundalini makes sense to me i just never was able to connect it to sexuality you know like i feel shakti and i feel her and i feel how beautiful and like abundant and open she is um I just sometimes I hesitate with like sexuality. I'm like, is this too pure to bring into the bedroom or to into my sexual experiences? And I, I know that that's religious conditioning. I know that it's religious conditioning and I'm bringing it into these esoteric spiritual um, principles. So is there any advice you can offer there? Like how to connect this beautiful spiritual energy, this bliss energy to sexuality, to bridge the two? focus on your womb area so where does sexuality where is sexuality dormant it's in the sacral where is the sacral it's in the womb right so it's right around the area of your of your yoni the perineum and the anus so the perineum lies between the yoni and the anus that's the area the lower womb part this is where sacral energy the sexual energy stands for while you are connecting with this part, just try to contract your uni muscles. So you're doing this, it's like, it's like as if you have to go to the restroom, but you cannot, so you're holding, right? So you're squeezing, you're releasing. You're squeezing, you're releasing. And you're trying this for a few moments, okay? You just you squeeze, you can close your eyes and really just focus on that part of your body. The womb represents the earth element. Yeah, the earth element stands for grounding sensuality, inner knowing, birthing, healing. It's a very powerful, important part. And then while you are contracting this energy, try with every contraction to pull it one step further up into your body. So you inhale, you exhale. And while you inhale, you contract, you exhale, you release. And when you exhale, exhale through your mouth. So we inhale, and all long deep inhales and exhales and do it slow not too fast and when you inhale in the beginning you just contract and after some time through the inhale try to pull up the energy all the way up from your sacral to your solar your chest your heart your throat and then you exhale oh. So in Tantra, we call this the microcosmic orbit. We are allowing the energy to move up from here, merge with the crown, and then go back down and create a circle. And then you do this for a couple of minutes. And you will notice when you're in tune with this that your body will start to move by itself. You might feel like you want to circle your upper body. Maybe you're starting to make some weird sounds. Everything is supposed to be there. And as a woman, you can start even moving your womb, your hip, 
you're just circling the natural movement of the feminine is a circle because it's the water right water energy and you stay with this for like five minutes at least and you just feel sexual energy right when we are trying to understand something we're using mind feminine is the body so everything happening from the neck down is the feminine this is masculine mm. so we need to unite it right so you pull it up here exhale pull it back and for five minutes and then you just can even move your body like a snake but your body is going to naturally start doing things so just allow this to happen this is how you connect with sexual energy without having to think about it there's nothing to think about there's everything to experience and something i noticed is like for a lot of women this might bring up a lot of pain and yes. a lot of deep emotions like even i was just feeling like my eyes get teary i'm like why is there so much pain here and obviously there's something to be explored, you know, like why is there so much fear of my body, fear of my sexual nature? And of course, these are limiting beliefs stored in the sacral chakra. Um, and obviously they come from patriarchal oppression. But, you know, um, I think that when people begin to feel this, these energies and these things come up, they're like, oh, they shut it off. Stop. Can't go there. But I actually, I think, what helps healing is to go into the resistance to go into the negative emotions quote unquote which i also have to um say that i don't think any emotions are negative i think all emotions are designed to protect you and designed to guide you and designed to connect you to god um see any any negative emotion negative right that we perceive as negative it's only because we feel that way they're only negative because we have not allowed them to pass through us emotions are meant to pass through us without us identifying and attaching ourselves with them and any negative emotion like shame guilt fear is stored in the sacral in the womb oftentimes though it is not always ours Remember, we are holding the seeds of our ancestral lineage. A lot of the pain that we are carrying actually stems from our mothers, from our grandmothers, even from our time in the womb, because whatever our mom experiences leaves an emotional stamp on us. And we carry it like a heavy backpack, not understanding why we are having it. So it's not always ours. In my work, I see it all the time. When we do this work, a lot of women break down and a lot of women tear up. And that is normal because can you imagine what you're doing to your body when you're keeping this all inside and you're not allowing yourself to release it? This is where so many diseases come into play. Cancer, a lot of feminine cancer comes through that. This is real. Yeah, digestive mm -hmm. issues. Like I, I probably have my digestive issues because of the stored emotions there and the inability to feel that region, you know? Yes. Yes, and that's that's where the real work is, is always in the womb. Womb, sexual energy, sacral. That's why you can't think you were there. You have to experience it. You have to completely drop into your body. It's all stored there. And then understanding which one is yours. Oftentimes when we do this work, suddenly images of grand-grandmothers show up to my clients. And they're like, what is she doing here? Because she gave her a burden that she didn't want to carry. And it's not in a negative sense, but sometimes we do that. We pass it on to the next generation unconscious it's unconscious too you know yeah. what what mother would want to pass that on to their daughter you know okay. yes. and that's what i realized like let's not blame our family they were living nope. in a different time a different conditioning a different regime a different astrological period like they literally didn't have the access tools or wisdom and i went through this um experiencing a lot of anger my ancestors like how could you do this to me <laughs> you know how could you do this to me how why didn't you figure your problems out you know and the same thing with my brother it, we're carrying all of the issues of our ancestors but the the hope there and the reconciliation there is that you now have the tools to heal and release all of this and to help liberate all of the souls who came before you in your ancestral lineage and, and that's, that's actually where your that's that's exactly where your power comes from. And oftentimes people are like, you have a very powerful energy field. I'm like, oh really? I feel like I look so like young and like innocent. And they're like, no, like you have really powerful energy. And I'm like, I know exactly why, because I'm liberating my whole entire family 
from whatever they experienced, which was a whole shit ton of things because they come from Russia. Like that's probably the worst suffering like possible, but you know, and, and I, I, what I developed is a resilience to suffering. Um, not in a negative way, a resilience to healing suffering. When suffering comes up, our mind immediately reacts and says, no, I don't want to feel this pain, anything. I don't want to feel this run the other way, fight, flight, freeze, whatever. What the feminine does, feminine energy allows you to sit with it, to really yeah. sit with it. First, you have to obviously root and ground and create a root system for release. And then you can go into it. And like the few people that I have worked with have been like, this was way less scary than I imagined. And I'm like, you know why? Because your mind has, you know, like honestly, like created a block, a wall that that creates um a barrier to experiencing these things and and obviously the mind is conditioned so that's where all the conditioning comes in like your conditioning as an individual has literally prevented you from feeling things that make you human yes partially yes but you need to understand that all the women that are here now Remember, in these times, nobody is born here by coincidence. Not that I think that ever anyone was, but especially this time now, women, the women that are here, it's their turn to heal the ancestral lineage, to heal the karma that comes with it. And this is not a blame game. And you have to allow yourself, like, like you did when you're angry, to be angry. It doesn't mean you're blaming or judging. It just means you're allowing the emotion to be there. Because whatever happened in the past, they did what they could with what they had. So the same way we do, but we are more aware now. We are more conscious. We are here to resolve that. That's our work. Mm -hmm. So working with the feminine is working with the deep waters, with the abyss of your soul. It's not cute, airy-fairy stuff in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we need to allow ourselves to feel all emotions without judging them. Yeah, it's very, very important. Yeah, I think um, that requires a lot of maturity. It's maturity that we haven't been taught that is possible. And it's a maturity that lies in confronting the unknown and uncertainty. And I have to say that our education system hasn't prepared us for this at all. So when you begin to awaken this divine feminine energy, it feels like you're going off the deep end. It feels like everything you learned is a lie. Um, all you're ever going to face is chaos and you have to completely reestablish your identity. And all of these things are true. I'm not saying they're not true. It's all very true, but you can look at it from a comedic curious perspective. Like, okay, like society and culture are pretty funny from a certain perspective. It's pretty funny. And that's why we have so many comedians because we need to swallow the truth somehow <laughs> and comedy and humor make it really easy. You know, like a part of you always knows the truth. A part of you always knows the truth. And you may not be conscious of that truth, but there will come a time and place where you will become conscious of that truth. And you will have to face that truth. And I think that's what a lot of people are doing now. And sexuality is just one of those things because we're not taught that sexuality is serious we're taught that we can you know have these sexual experiences with no consequences no costs you know and look at social media instagram everything is sexualized like i had to take a week off to um for my reiki training um for my reiki detox i'm not supposed to consume social media and i just turned it on to see my messages and I was just like, this is really absurd. Everything here is beautiful and perfect. Everything. Everything. There's not one real thing here. Everything is beautiful and perfected. And it just, I don't think, I don't think any of that matters. <laughs> you know, like I really, I just think it's funny. I think it's like, why are we doing this? Like we're, it's self-sabotage. We're doing this to ourselves. Like stop consuming that content. Follow moms, follow people who have fit bodies, follow people who like are struggling. Like stop doing this to yourself, especially women. Stop, stop doing this to yourself, you know? 
Yeah, it's it's absolutely true. And it's beautiful that you see that from that young age already, especially your generation is much more social media influence than, for example, my generations, we didn't have that back in the late 80s and 90s, right? So it's much more, let's say, a neo problem of, of the millennials and, of course, for everyone by the end of the day. But you can follow whoever you want to follow. If you're in your power, none of it was going to influence you. And this is the secret, actually, because you can't control what's out there, what's trending. Let it trend. You control you. And people love the truth, want the truth, but cannot handle the truth. And that's why sarcasm is amazing, because the truth is wrapped in humor so we can digest it. But the truth in ourselves, we cannot cover up in sarcasm. We have to face it directly head on. Mm -hmm. And that's our path to liberation. If you really want to be free, so if you ask any human, what do you want? Well, top value, freedom. Okay, do the work. Yeah. And then once you do it, it's not even any more maturity. It's awareness, it's consciousness. Everything shifts and you will understand that most of the things we are taught work in the paradox in the beginning of your journey you need a lot of tools tools such as yoga right practices there are tools to get you to a certain state and they're beautiful at some point you're just there you do not need any tools mm -hmm. yeah. and that's the upgraded level yeah yes. getting. i was like in the bookstore the other day and i was like normally i read every self-help book you know i'm a self-help book junkie like every book out there and then it clicked. I was like, they're all saying the same thing. <laughs> I was like, all of these books are saying the same thing. Why would I continue to consume this? It's all the same thing. And then I was like, let me go read fantasy fiction. You know, <laughs> like, <laughs> let me go to the weird books and like creative content. Like, I don't need this anymore. And you're so, you're so right. Even, even our most pro profound teacher or guru in life, we will have to detach from that eventually. If we, if we are really on a path to individual freedom and empowerment, you're going to have to detach from everything you've learned and even the people who inspire you. Um, yeah. I, I can't say that everyone's on this path because it is, happens to be very difficult and you need a, like a degree of self-trust, a very, 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 very high degree of self-trust. Yes. And you have to believe your intuition and um i think i think a lot of people are doing it um from what i see i think a lot of people are doing it um and it happens in bursts it's not an all the time thing um it, sometimes you'll have this moment of enlightenment and in like a supermarket be like wow this is all really dumb and then, and then you'll come back <laughs> like i had in bali that's what i was telling you about <laughs> <laughs> I know you have the same humor as me. <laughs> <laughs> Get me out of here. <laughs> I'm like, this is ridiculous. Why do I care about this? Why am I, why am I invested in this drama and this unnecessary conflict? And then the next thing you know, a part of you is in that conflict. And it's just, it's like, sometimes you have moments like that. And sometimes you have moments like that. And that's okay. And eventually you're right. You have to let go of all of it. You just have to let go of it. And you'll find, like, uh, your mind is like, oh, you're going to float off into space. You're just going to die. Like, whatever. Some really bad things will happen. But you just end up being there free. That's it. And the letting go part is not even something you have to focus on. That's, again, something that make, keeps people in a vicious cycle. Because if you're focusing on letting go of something, right? So let's say... I don't know, let's say you want to let go of your negative belief about sexuality, okay? So you're fo whether you're focusing on your negative belief of that sexuality or you are focusing on letting go of that belief, your focus remains on the same damn thing, which is that negative belief. So the work is to shift your focus woof, to that actual thing you desire. This is where energy work comes in, energy transmutation, right? So energy flows where attention goes, where you're focusing on. That's it. And that's where it goes back to the body. That's again where it's the body work, the inner calmness, trusting, really trusting, removing any sense of victim mentality. We run out of a lot of victim mentality. This has been done to us. This is done to us. This is enough. Because focusing again on that is the same principle with the letting go shit. What do you desire instead? Where do you want to go instead? How do you want to feel instead? 
Yeah, and of course that path goes through the deep abyss of your soul, through the deep waters, right? But that's the only way to go. The only way out is through. Mm -hmm. And everyone at their own time. And as you say, when you get there, eventually you're in a store and you're like, what on earth is that? As I'm saying, eventually everyone is going to get red-pilled sooner or later. We're already there. The movement is unstoppable because this is the theme of our new era. We are actually in amazing times. Liz. These times are going to go down, hopefully correctly, in our history books. And we are part of that awakening. We are part of that evolutionary process. This is amazing. Mm -hmm. And we should all be proud of it and take responsibility for it. You need to ask yourself, when these times or if these times should be in history books, for what do I want to be remembered? If your grandchild asks you, mommy, daddy, what did you do at that time? What are you going to say? Broke every law, <laughs> <Deep> <laughs> myself, healed my ancestral trauma, reparented yeah. myself. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, because you're healing also your future ancestors, and your, your future daughters, your future nieces. Mm -hmm. And yourself, should you be reincarnated? Yeah, it all, you're, you're doing this for everyone. So that's what I'm saying. What we are doing is incredible work. Mm -hmm. And we are doing this, no pressure, for all our entire lineage. Mm -hmm. Yes. Collectively and individually, right? So this is our work. And it's, it's an honor to be here. Your soul chose that, so act as if it did. Mm -hmm. I love what you said. And, and this really connects to in the beginning how you talked about divine timing. Um, mm -hmm. So we keep saying your soul, your soul, your soul. Your soul is your higher self. Your soul is your subconscious mind. Your soul is your channel to universal consciousness or God. And mm -hmm. your soul has a divine plan that at one point in your life, you will know the truth. And perhaps it's not now, perhaps it's not tomorrow. But even if you're listening to this podcast to this point, your soul is already on that path. You're all, something's cooking. And, and then at one point, be like, bang, you'll have that point of singularity, complete understanding. And then you will need to integrate everything you have learned. And this connection, this, this connection to everything that is, it's, it's really mind blowing. Um, and I wish I could prepare you for this, but the point is that you go into this unprepared. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, I don't want to give you too much information and that's that's the wrong thing with like this whole waking up movement and awakening we can't take it into the toxic masculine and be like wake up wake up you know like controlling people to wake up like are you kidding me that's not gonna work you know <laughs> like um the best thing to do is to see people as they are and like if you're already awake and i understand it's difficult it's, it's toxic it's hard to breathe it's suffocating sometimes okay yes it's hard but you always have to keep your 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 truth and your light you always have to be vibrating at the same pace that you are in your bedroom where you meditate to when you walk outside. And yes, it's difficult and you will attract negative energies and all of these elements, but you're always going to have to come back to the truth, become stronger, become stronger, become stronger and hold that energy up in every space you enter. And then people will be like, oh, this is sustainable. This actually works. Maybe I should try. And slowly everyone around you will begin to come asking you for advice the people who are laughing at you <laughs> and that's it. You just, the only way is to, to lead by inspiration. That's the only way you can do really anything. It's exactly that it's through inspiration, but especially through embodiment. Why we say embodiment because you're being embodiment is being right. Mind is thinking. So, and it's the energy people pick up. You pick up on someone being authentic or not. It comes natural. You don't need to think about it. Yeah. And you don't even, that's why I said, once you reach there, you don't anymore feed into concepts. You don't need concepts. You don't need even tools. You might every now and then come back to them just to refresh or to do something, but you don't really need any of this anymore. And that's the real shift. That's the real liberation. And we are going there. No, Everyone no labels. Here no labels no concepts no yeah. um categories you're gonna feel like you're going crazy because your mind has been used to living on this identity like mental thoughts mental like okay so the only thing that leads to is overthinking and rumination you never receive a result by overthinking you only re re receive more overthinking so i want you to experiment with 
what does it feel like if I go to the other side of overthinking? What's the opposite of overthinking? It's just being, which is what Anita is saying. The opposite of overthinking is just being. Mm -hmm. And I'll say to someone, just be. They look at you <laughs> as if you fell from Mars. <laughs> what do you mean? What do you mean? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think it's more normalized though. That's a good thing. Do, 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 run, run, cheese. Yeah. Yeah. Another thing. Yeah, another, yeah, we are getting there. Another limiting belief is that when you be begin to move in flow and be in this energy of just being, people think you're lazy. People think you're lazy. You're not doing anything. You're not hustling. And that, that was a big limiting belief too. And, and, that, and, and that was like the final straw for me. I'm like, why do I need to do something for someone else who's going to underpay me, undervalue my energy when I can just be here with the universe, you know? And my mom was like, what are you doing? <laughs> and now slowly everyone's like, maybe I should try that. You know, maybe that will work. <laughs> so... Yeah, try it. Just try it out. It's, it's a game of frequency, right? And in the beginning, it will be like a tennis match. You jump here, you jump there, and you're like, oh my God. And eventually, it will balance itself out. And you will start understanding it from an embodied point of view. Because again, if we are trying to understand it, it's mental. You're trying to bring thought into it. You can't think your way there, right? It's soul work. It's embodiment work. It's experience, not thought. It's felt. So that's why it's always about going back into that and getting yourself out of this constant hustle culture. It's just, I think you're from New York, right? Yes, yes, yes. The center so, of the ball. Okay, so how do you guys always say, hey, how are you doing? How are you doing? I was in New York years ago. And it's like, you don't say, how are you? But like, how are you doing? And that goes back to that. It's going again to doing. Why don't you say, hey, how are you being? You know, <laughs> I think that was a new thing we could introduce. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true yeah and at this point it's like people are doing just to be doing there's no purpose you know it, that that is the definition of toxic masculine and I, and I know we're um gonna have yeah. to close soon but like the the toxic masculine is doing without purpose Correct. Doing, without, doing without cognition or awareness and that just connected in my mind because I'm trying to define toxic masculine this whole time. And it's very simple. It's right in front of me. Toxic masculine is doing without cognition or awareness of the fact that what, of what you're doing and what it's going to bring. Yes. Beautifully said. Correct. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. And to what is toxic feminine then? Toxic feminine is not being embodied in who she fully is. She is needy, she is always in a victim mentality, and she needs others to feel good about herself. She's constantly giving, not able to receive. And she's someone that gossips, nags, and that sees other women as competition, rather than as alliances and sisters. So these are just a few examples of toxic femininity. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's very strong in our culture. Mm -hmm. It's very strong. Women are just doing, not allowing themselves to receive. Toxic femininity is also if you overgive, but you don't allow yourself to receive, yeah, because you think that's what you should be doing. It's always putting others first, never yourself, and then falling into depression, toxic femininity. It's chasing after man because you don't know your worth, toxic femininity. Putting others down to make yourself feel better, toxic femininity. Yeah, these are all negative traits, and they express themselves in, in people in different ways. Mm -hmm. It's everywhere where, sorry continue I it's everywhere where the natural feminine isn't balanced mm -hmm. yeah so if you look at what the feminine naturally represents and then the opposite of it obviously is what we would consider toxic or unbalanced unhealthy mm -hmm. and i think let's be honest we've all been places where we have been toxic feminine um, yes and i carry a lot of shame about this because i take I take my integrity and, and my morality very seriously. And mm. when I was confronted with this fact of my toxic feminine traits, I think there's a better way to communicate with females about this. Instead of saying, you are doing this, you are bad, you, know, you, you have bad traits, you have toxic traits. Let's sit women down and say, listen, you are taught to be like this. It's not your fault. There's a better way to do this. 
there's a more conscious way we can do this gently and you and i both know that women don't respond to control and negative criticism well at all so mm -hmm. how can we talk to women about this and uh, the strategy i came up with is psychoeducation what how you how were you conditioned what did society make you feel like how do you feel at the root level do you feel unworthy do you feel shameful do you feel sad do you feel pain and if you help women get to this root level all of a sudden this blossoming will happen naturally and the blossoming happens where the woman says hey maybe there's a different way to do this maybe and and the thing with women is that we're so tricky we're complex and there is a way to align things in such a way that the flow goes naturally <laughs> and i think that the way to align that is to point point the fingers back at at the person you know like at at what what is valuable to me like let's say like let's say i'm being a toxic woman which i have been in the past because I'm in New York City and I went to fashion school. <laughs> and let's say I am being a toxic woman, right? What is a good way to sit down, Liz, and say, there's a better way to do this? I would sit myself down and I want to hear what you would say too, but this is, this is coming through right now. I would say, hey, I know that the way things work isn't ideal. And I know there's something else inside of you that wants to be expressed. That's what I would say. And at that point, I would fully just go into awakening, you know, <laughs> like it's, it, but you know what, maybe, maybe that's just me and I don't want to generalize for all women. So what do you think? First off, if you want to address someone that they are toxic, you need to do it in a way that doesn't attack them and make them feel defensive. Right, so that's the first step. So how do we do that is by creating a safe space, a safe space where you can ask questions that allow this person to see those things for themselves. Mm -hmm. This is the real trick of doing that, right? So it's not something that you preach and that you show up into someone's face, but it's something that you, through guidance and safety, allow them to see for themselves. So you can ask them where in their life are they not feeling safe? Are they not feeling nurtured? And are they not feeling valued? That's a step number one. Because safety, nourishment, and value are core elements of feminine. With us women, safety is number one baseline of everything because we subconsciously always walk around with the fear of possibly getting physically attacked because our, our bodies are so much more prone to abuse sexual abuse in particular than it is for men so subconsciously even if nothing god forbid you know ever happened to us this is still there and this plays out in all areas of our lives so when we are acting out of a toxic feminine there is a part of us where we don't feel safe and we often use our masculine to overcompensate that that's why we can get aggressive or we chase we just do we we like we are really hard on ourselves that's not a feminine a feminine surrender she trusts she does what she can, but then she's like, all right, I got it. It will come to me. Mm -hmm. So ask yourself where you're not safe, where you don't feel nourished, and where you don't feel valued. And then look at the pattern that it plays out in, in what areas in your life, and what role you're playing in it. Mm -hmm. I love that, because then you give the person the keys to their own soul path, rather okay. than rather than projecting what you believe and i've been in a situation where i felt attacked personally and mm -hmm. i was just like a younger girl and I, I was in this position and i understand the feeling of responsibility that this person has but i think there's a right way to do it and i think that no matter even if i was toxic or aggressive or whatever you saw this beautiful soul shining through me and I think that it was very painful for another woman to do this to another woman. And I think if you want to help heal this pattern, that's not the way to do it because that is, that is a toxic masculine pattern. Um, and I understand that there's healthy confrontation and we need to, you know, confront our conflict, but I don't think that's the way. And I think um, I'm, I've learned a lot from that experience and I really, 
what I do is I help women to enter a space of, you know, yes, like I think that the the questioning. So how does that make you feel? How does that make you understand things? What what did that lead to? And people get there on their own. People always get there on their own. And if you think that you know better than someone else, what's good for them? You don't. That's masculine. That's jaded, distorted, toxic masculine. If you mm-hmm. think you know better what's good for another female and you want to interfere with her divine timing, her soul path, you're attracting negative karma to yourself. Yes. Correct. Because they're taking away someone's lessons. Mm-hmm. They have to get there on their own. All you can do is guide them. And as I always say, create that safe space, meaning energetically provide for them a feeling that they can open up and feel safe without being judged or labeled as something. Because very few people are actually really going deep into someone's soul, right? We see someone, whether we like it or not, we we don't understand it's our projection to them and we judge, boom, but we actually judge as a part of ourselves so we see in them. So once all of this is removed and done, you actually are able to see the person for who it is. You you might even be right with where the problem is, but your job is not to tell them, your job is to guide them to find it out for themselves. Mm -hmm. And that's where real transformation and alchemy takes place. And I think there can be a lot of trauma created with this um attacking form of healing you know for so long i was afraid to even touch the feminine energy because i was like i'm unworthy of this because i messed up Mm. so that was something i also need to overcome and it was it was really painful and i just i'm really working on creating a way for women to come out of the the negative vortex in a positive way you know and, and something i say is awakening is beautiful healing is transformative you have so many beautiful guides you're connected to source energy before i do anything because without that we can take all of those lessons and turn them into something that some negative self-limiting belief you know that's what i'm saying you know information is everywhere we live in a time of information overload what is rare is embodiment leading by example that is what will call people in that is what will make someone look at you and say wow i want that too for myself how can i get there mm-hmm. and that's the real secret source yeah it's being fully in your power because by being that you allow others to be in their power and everyone wants that i don't care what people are trying to say everyone wants to be in their power wants to be truly free and feel at peace mm-hmm. You know what? I, I, I'm so happy I had you on. Your energy is just so beautiful. And I think that's what spoke to me. Um, how authentically you speak and how from the heart you speak and how non-judgmental you are. And I have to say that I think you are the empowered feminine. I think we found <laughs> her. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> I, think so. I, think, I think like women almost get there, but then they have that judgment. Yeah, it's and the that's judgment. What really messes it up. It's the judgment. You know, like I'm more empowered than you because I did this and you didn't. You know, mm-hmm. and and I really thank you for you know holding that space in the world and just being non-judgmental. You know, no matter what. Um, so, where can viewers and listeners find you or work with you? So I obviously have my social media like everyone nowadays. So you can find me on Instagram and at, at Anita double score Milovas, which is my surname. And I am also on Facebook and I, you can work with me either through my private programs. I have a link in my bio, which leads to my website, which is anitamilovas.org. And I'm also currently in the process of doing an online marathon which is going to start on the 2nd of february 2022 which is a perfect number working with energy and numbers it's a one month online marathon which is conducted through telegram and it's called the high priestess coach so what we are working on is exactly mostly what we have spoken about but in particular i'm working with the energies of the current nodes so i work also with astrology and the nodes of the moon which are our karmic and dharmic points have shifted into taurus and scorpio which is very venusian energy so we are talking it's all about sensuality self-worth values relationship money 
sex, sex and sexual energy, power. So all the topics that we don't like so often to talk about, they're all going to be addressed in this marathon. So I'm going to shoot everyday videos with a lot of knowledge and wisdom and insights with exercises so we'll have different topics each day but everything is aligned so there's basically a structure behind it and then you can listen to these videos and do your practices and it will be a group of women however many are going to sign up so you're going to be in a safe space with a lot of women doing the same thing growing together and it's for one month and i think it's an incredible opportunity to really dive into this topic in a private space for yourself because you do not need to send videos you just get them from me and then you do the practice and at home right so i think it's it's great for everyone who hasn't done the work or who would like to dig deeper into the work of sexual energy of feminine masculine energies and union and of your own sovereign power and also of your wealth mindset because money and wealth is linked to love and self-worth right so these are pillars that go together how much do you believe yourself to be worthy to receive whether it's money or love yeah so all of this is 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 one big ball and i really look forward to start this so whoever is listening if you would like to join you can check it out okay awesome so yes follow her on instagram she's so beautiful and also so inspirational and like i said the empowered feminine and I've had so much pleasure, you know, talking about all of these amazing topics. I think we went like, I mean, this happens in my podcast. Like it ends up being like a whole consciousness, like satsang <laughs> rather than like a concentrated topic. But, you know, I'm trying my best to become more grounded in the material realm, you know. Um, however, I think that what people really need is the expansion talks and the consciousness of uplifting stuff and the the depth and the overwhelming kindness that you can experience from people who are in this field and i know that some people have had negative experience with like cults healers kundalini energy and unfortunately i want to tell you that all of that is because we haven't had the support for the divine feminine we haven't had the training we haven't had the tools and we haven't had people who are intuitive enough and detached from identity enough to really facilitate those experiences in a healthy way. So I'm sorry if you haven't had those experiences, but we are working on it and we're raising awareness. And you do have people who can truly help you on this journey. And I wish you the best today. Tune back in to the Liz Soko podcast. You can head to my website for blog posts, podcast, podcast episodes, and also for my services. I do energy activation and healing sessions as well as a mindset coaching program. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.